We have made a video about how to connect to Postgres from JavaScript, specifically the Node.js runtime JavaScript, right? And uh, we, we were able to basically connect to the Postgres database, establish a connection, uh, send queries, and also make insert statement transaction. We learned a lot about that. I'm gonna reference that video, guys, right here. Uh, so because I'm gonna skip through certain things in this video right so we have learned all, all about that right so we built it almost like a framework to connect to uh, Postgres from JavaScript from the Node.js but you guys asked me says hey Hussein we tried to copy your code right and we paste it into our browser in order to build a web application and it gave us all kind of errors and it made sense guys because that code is especially node.js code it was designed for the runtime or oh, that is node.js however the browser can only connect to http it can only make http calls it can only make web calls and that's it it cannot make anything else right and uh, databases need to be consumed using the TCP protocol. It's a very low level, level uh, protocol. So that is why browsers cannot connect to Postgres directly. You need this extra layer that sits between you as a browser, as a client, as a front end, and your database. And this is usually called a web server because it serves HTTP calls, it serves web calls or web responses back to your client which is the browser right so that's uh, essentially why you really need this layer so in this video we will learn how to use express which sits on top of node.js uh, to spin up a web server and serves an api which will allow us to communicate uh, from our browser to the backend database right this is coming up if you're new here, guys, welcome. My name is Hussein, and we discuss all sorts of software engineering topics by example. So if you want to become a better software engineer, check out the content of this channel and consider subscribing. With that said, let's just jump into this video, guys. So there's the points that we're going to discuss in this tutorial, this uh, lecture course anything you want to call it right so the first thing we're going to talk about is setting up the database the postgres database i'm not going to go through it in details i'm going to show you my postgres database we have already made a video how to set up a postgres database creating a tables and do all that fancy stuff using docker and docker is great because you don't want to really pollute your laptop or set up with an installation of databases right so install docker spin up a container that have Postgres in it, and then do your thing. Once you're done, destroy the container and your machine is intact. So I, I also recommend for development using container. And it's also making it really, really easy when you want to deploy things. So I'm going to reference the video that we have done on Postgres and databases. And uh, the second thing we need to know is just how to set up Node.js and Express, really. And uh, specifically, we're going to talk about just uh, set, uh, spinning up my uh, Visual Studio code and all that stuff, which we have already done. I'm not going to go through that in details. Third thing, we're going to uh, show you the to-do back functions. So what, we, what we're really building here is actually a very simple app that to, makes a to-do uh, list, right? So you are in browser, you open the page, it will list all the to-dos. And this to-do is like, going, hey, go to Costco, go to Trader Joe's, pick up toothbrush whatever right so it's a very simple really a good demo for for uh, for everyone and uh, to do that we have we will gonna pull this from the back end database which we have already configured I'm gonna show you that so I'm gonna show you the the code of the back end functions which I have already written I don't want to waste your time showing that because we have already explained how we can connect to Postgres from node.js this this video is always about how we can expose, and this is the next point, we wanna expose these functions uh, through the API, through the web server, so I can consume it from my application, from my web application, from my front end, whether this is React or any uh, just pure vanilla JavaScript. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. Uh, the fourth point, we're gonna uh, discuss how to write a to-do list API. 
we're going to implement the get method, which is an HTTP method, which will return all the to-dos from the database, return it as a beautiful JSON payload. And we're going to implement post, which will allow us to create a new to-do right from the browser. And the final, we're going to implement delete, which will allow us to delete a to-do right from our browser. And I'm not going to use any authentication, authentication or whatsoever here, maybe in another video. Finally, we're going to build the web application or the web page the, in, the, in the browser that consumes this API and show it to us. How about that, guys? Let's just jump into it. So the first thing we're going to do, showing you guys that I have this set up here. I have PG admin for, and I have Postgres database with a table, the database that's called to do. And there is a beautiful, nice table here that is called to do's. And it has only four. Uh, uh, it has only two lists. It's actually more since I did that. Yeah, <laughs> I've been playing with that. So there's a bunch of rows here. I'm going to clean this up later. Don't worry about it. But it has a bunch of rows that this is what we have in the database. Okay, And I have essentially this is all running on Docker. Again, I just use basically a command client to essentially do Docker PS showing you that I have a PG admin container running and Postgres also running in this database. Postgres is listening on port 5432 and the PG admin is listening on port 5555. So I have done all of that guys, um, explained that in the video. So I'm going to reference that video for you. You can check it out later. All right. So, and uh, we have the database, we have the PG admin, we have a table. I think we're ready to show you some code, right guys? All right guys. So if you have watched my previous video with Postgres and JavaScript, you, you this code is very familiar, right? So we have used the node, uh, Postgres uh, client library to connect to Postgres, right? And this is how you basically require that. We have created an instance, and this is the username and passwords. That's my username. That's my password for Postgres database. That's the host. This is my this database is living on my machine, which is this Mac laptop, right? And that's the port of the database, and that's the database that I want to connect to, right? Once you do that, we're gonna call a function called start, which has all these little functions right in them, which I have written in them before. The first thing is we want to connect to the database, which essentially does a client disconnect. We're using an async await here, which is like, a, I think it's a little bit more readable than using then, uh, uh, then catch uh, finally. It's up to you. Again, guys, we have talked about that. Then catch finally versus async await. I'm going to reference the video there uh, in the card. So take a look at that. So once we have that, the first thing we're going to do is connect to the database. There, this could fail. Your username is incorrect. Your database, your username is locked. The host cannot be reached. Millions of other reasons of why you cannot connect to the database. But once you do connect to the database, right, what happens here is essentially we can call another function called read to do's, which I have done. And what this does is essentially create calls client.query and literally just a, do, does a full table scan, a bad query, never write this, something like that, guys, right? So you need you need some sort of filter. So select ID and text from all to-dos, give me everything, right? Return the result and then return a rows from my result. If this fails, go and return an empty array. Sweet. And there is another function called create to-do, which will allow us to insert into to-do text and then we'll just take the text and then insert it into that database obviously we don't need to specify the id because it's a sequence right it's a serial to be specific uh, postgres serial which will just increment by itself we don't have to worry about it all right and if it succeeded we're going to return true failed return false Delete is the final one, which will allow us to delete a to-do by specifying its ID. So we really need this piece of information, which is the ID. All right, guys. So if I run this thing now, you can see, for example, that debug. We have first read to-do. That's what we get a call, right? Start, that's the function. It reads all the to-dos and prints them. We have, what, four, five? five to do's here and then created another one a bunch of go to trader joe's oh my god so really need to go to trader joe's huh my wife is nagging here all right so deleting you can delete that and we're deleting id number one i think which doesn't exist so 
it will also succeed. This is an item potent call, so it will also succeed. All right, guys, let's do express. How can I take this thing and consume it from my web? Obviously, if I copy this code now and paste it into the JavaScript, it will it will get all kind of errors like choir is not a function i don't know what a lot of functions that doesn't really make sense in in the browser right maybe one day we're gonna make a code that literally copy and paste there and and will work but there are certain things like this thing will never work in the browser you cannot pull this thing and pull it in the browser and connect to the database directly right it, it just uses TCP while the browser makes HTTP calls all right so here's what we need we need the Express library so we're gonna import Express create an application right and literally just Express and then we're gonna use app dot I will do that later Let's just use things only when we need them, guys. All right, so here's what we're going to do here. We're going to implement the first function, which is get all the to-dos and retrieve them, all right, into the, uh, into the uh, browser. In order to do that, we need to implement the First, we need to listen, obviously. And uh, to do that, we need to do app.listen on port 8080. And then let's say making the web server listening says console.log my web server is listening on port 8080 okay so that's this is the call that will allow us to start making a web server running it will just application will keep running previously when we run it if you notice that it will just run and will immediately close if I run it now it will stay running okay and then if I do that and run you'll notice that my application didn't stop it's still running right because it's listening to port 8080 sweet this is really not enough we really need to implement the get application at least one call let's do just for simplicity on the root eh, not root let's go if, if someone visited this root slash to do's I want you to return request response this is the function that will get called and what I will need to return is response dot send send back hey these are all my to do's whatever <laughs> okay so let's check this out guys so if I do that I'm listening right and uh, what we're gonna do is I'm going to go to a browser and I'm going to do HTTP localhost 8080 or Mac, uh, I was saying Mac, the same machine name, same thing works, to do's. If I do that, look at that. Hey, these are all my to do's. So we actually, this call worked. So how about that? How about we actually return, connect to the database, return those results? Hi right, guys, how can we do that? First of all, we're doing too much here, guys. So we no longer need to do any of that in the star function. So let's just, yeah, let's just comment out all of that stuff. So wait, I just want to connect. I just want to establish my connection, leave it running on my server. That's that we did. And once we do that, what we're going to do is um, I'm going to do read to do's. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to Get, read all the to do's const get the results and then I want to send this results which is the results dot rows are we send are we returning the rows or okay we're returning the rows that's good so we can immediately return the rows here guys all right so the send function here we're sending something across the wire right we cannot send an object like that we have to send a string okay and since this is a json we need really need to stringify it make it into a string okay that's it so we're now returning that and then let's run this there's something missing but we'll come to that gonna get an error what what are you talking about guys 
await is only valid in an async function. Duh. That makes sense because you're using await, but your function that you're currently in is not async. So let's make it async. That's not hard. And we're listening. And then run. And look at that, guys. We got back a string, a JSON string that is actually looks weird looks like a text right okay but we got all the results that's pretty cool all right so we got the results but they are all in text guys right so what we need to do is essentially tell the browser by the way what i'm sending you now is essentially a json if you take a look at the developer tools and the network call that we just make you have noticed that look at the content type guys it says it's text HTML, but that's not true. Or I'm not sending back as text HTML. I'm sending back JSON. So how can I teach this thing that I'm sending back a JSON, right? It's very simple. We're gonna send the header. Remember that header was was content type, right? So we're gonna set a header called content type, and then application json that's what we're sending back guys we're sending back application json so we're gonna send back an application json and let's take a look refreshing let's really mean to refresh we need to really clear the cache look at that guys so what happened is now the browser recognized that is actually a json look at that things happen right guys when it's json it's actually different now we're talking now we can consume this and do stuff with it guys okay so we have the to do's we have right we can now pull in the to do's that's pretty cool all right guys so we have learned how to do a get request on this this is one way to do a get request another way is to do it from the console right which is like writing a javascript code that to do that and in order to do that it's very simple you call a fetch function by the way guys we have made a great video on how all about fetch API. This is allows you to make a request uh, through the HTTP protocol from the browser. So I'm gonna do HTTP localhost 88. You can so you can see that I already did this before, right? So the first thing is the method. We're gonna implement the method, which is I need to make a GET request. Okay, and I guess that's it, right? And then what you do is essentially do then. Uh, just I'm expecting a JSON back, right? And then when you do that, just do a console.log and then print that thing. And here we go, we got back the results. So that's another way to get back the results and consume it from that. Because remember this, we're gonna use the same syntax when we build our web application in a minute, guys, okay? So we implemented the git. What is next, guys? Next is post. Next is post, guys. To build in post is essentially we want to create a new to do, right? And to create a new to do, we can just copy and paste this thing and then change get to post, right? I'm posting to the to do's rest endpoint. But here's the thing what is changing here? I'm not gonna do read, I'm gonna create a to do, right? But guess what? We need an input. We need what are you actually sending, right, guys? What? Why are we not sending? What, what is exactly we're sending? We're sending the text of to do, right? We're creating something. So we don't have that, obviously. Uh, the content, we're not returning rows. We're really just doing a try catch. We forgot to do a try catch here, just in case something failed. So we're going to do a try catch catch let's do e like something failed here so what i'm gonna do is essentially let's just do let uh, result equal uh, i don't know empty string json empty json and if if uh, if there is results in post right if there is a result i'm gonna set result dot success equal true okay and then if there is fail i'm gonna set result to success equal false and then here's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna do finally 
always return the result. That's that's even better, right, guys? This way, I don't have to write the set header every time. So this way, we got the results back. We don't really expect anything, so we can remove that. Create to do. So here's what we need to do, guys. We need a text, right? And the text, we didn't send it yet, but I'm expecting to send a JSON. And the JSON will be, let's say, uh, I don't know, request JSON equal request. It comes back as a, as a result from request dot body. Okay, if it's if the body is JSON, which we will send, we will send everything in, in JSON. This becomes a JSON. Okay, but it will never be parsed by Express unless you tell it to. You need to tell it that. By the way, I'm sending you a JSON, guys. So look out. To do that, you go all the way here, and that's the thing we didn't write in the beginning because I don't write to write code that doesn't really mean anything. I want to actually write code that you can relate to. I don't want to just some copy paste code. And what you're gonna do is here app your to use and you can use express.json. And there's the beauty of this. When you do that, it used to be called body parser, but express now you can do it. The latest 4.2 something I think. I forgot the Xpex, uh, express version. But if you got an error, make sure you're you're downloading the latest express. So this will tell us that without this line, this will be blank. This will be undefined. Okay. So we're gonna get the request JSON back and I'm going to have a property called to do here in this thing, in this JSON object. Okay. We can obviously run it this way, but we need to consume it. How can we consume this thing? We're going to show you. Let's run it first. We got identifier res is already being declared. Really? Where is it? It's not already declared. It's, ooh, <laughs> it's been declared. All right, let's call the result then. Oh, man. It's part of the function, so I'm sorry, guys. Shouldn't have done that. And this is that this this is actually a risk. <laughs> okay, this is a result. All right, let's take it out. This should do the trick. Did we mess things up? We did not. Hopefully, request and response. Dot. All right. So let's make a post request, guys. This time, I'm gonna make a post request, but that's not enough. We need to tell. Uh, if you notice in the git I didn't send anything else I just sent that but with this you really need to send headers and the headers need to be like what kind of headers you're sending and that you really need to tell the server hey by the way I'm sending you JSON you gotta say that because otherwise because otherwise you will the server will not know that you're sending it JSON. You have to tell the server that you're sending it JSON. Okay, so send the header. And the final thing we do is send the body, and the body is actually the JSON payload that we're gonna send, and that is JSON dot stringify stringify, and we're gonna send it a beautiful JSON. And remember, guys, what was it? It was literally to do. It has a to do, and what do you want it? What do we? What should we send it? Stringify. I misspelled it. Stringify. Okay. So where we send it is here. What? What should we do today? Brush my teeth. Really? You need a to do to do that, man. Really need a to do to brush your teeth. And let's make a. Let's make a breaking point here, and then let's send this thing away. Come back. Ooh, look at that, guys! That's exactly what we send. We send a to do. Brush my teeth, right? The value of the to do is brush my teeth. We got in the request JSON. Boop. Give me the to dos. Go ahead and create it. Success. Run. That is so cool, guys. We got back success equal true. Now let's do the first one. Let's do a get. Do we get brush my teeth? 
we get a brush mighty. So we just implemented the post. We just implemented the get. Finally, let's implement the delete, guys. Shouldn't be hard, right? Should not be hard at all. So let's do that. Delete. How do you delete? Uh, let's just steal this code. Delete is another HTTP method that you can implement, guys. And what we're going to do here with the delete is essentially it's the same exact thing. We're going to send something, but we only interested in the ID. So we can do just requested ID and we need to send the ID that you want to delete. It's pretty simple. That's it. And instead of doing create to do, we just do delete to do. And then you specify the ID. Will that work? How about we check it out? And then we make a post. We don't make a post. We're going to make a delete request. We're not, we don't, we're not going to send the to do. We're going to send delete ID number. I don't know. Let's delete ID number seven. Go to Trader Joe's. And bye. It was deleted, I think. So if I list, look at that, guys. Seven is deleted. Seven is deleted, right? Don't don't confuse these numbers with these numbers. These are the ones we're deleting. These are just the array index. <laughs> okay, let's just delete four, five, six, eight, nine. Okay, delete all of these guys. Okay, so we can implement another REST endpoint to delete the bulk of IDs. And that's probably the way to go, guys. You don't delete uh, one by one. That's just, uh, it really depends on what you're trying to do here. If the function you're trying to do, uh, you want to be more optimized, you can delete one by one. If you like, uh, all comes back to the user experience as well. If you want to like make the user select a bunch of to-dos and delete them at once, you can make one call to the REST endpoint instead of multiple. Uh, that's always a good idea. All right, where's the get? Get. Oh, we only have four. Okay, guys, we have our CRUD. Create, update. We don't have update. Eh, I'm not going to do update. You, you can get, you get the idea though, right? Update and get uh, in the HTTP protocols called PUT, P-U-T. Okay. So guys, we've been doing this post and get and what why are why are we using this method? Can I just use delete to get something? Of course, you can do that. You can do post to read stuff, you can do get to write stuff, but you're just really breaking the rules. And if you break the rules, browsers cannot make optimizations as per your application. So get and I made a video about get and post, and I'm gonna make another one to emphasize the idea. Git is only to read stuff. You don't change the backend. You don't write to a database, you don't do stuff, you just read and give me the result. And if the, uh, the browser is based on that, caches the git request. And there are a lot of other stuff as well. Post, on the other hand, you can send more data as you can as you saw with git you don't send anything you just receive you cannot send anything in the body with git with post you can send stuff in the body you can send a lot of results in the body git you can only send something in the url which has a limit right 2000 2, bytes and uh, and then this this obviously changes from web server to another uh, delete obviously has semantics and you really need to follow these semantics guys if you want your application to behave if you want application browsers can make assumptions and optimize your application as a result of that caching and all that stuff all right final point guys all right let's build the index.html that actually does all that stuff guys how about that so i'm gonna build an index.html and html5 and then just say my best to do app ever okay and then let's just serve this because we did not serve it how do we serve this it's a get request because we're we're returning something right guys so did return this and then request and response I can, I think I can do it with one line of code, so I'm not going to add the braces here. 
So response the send file and then dir name in this dir. I think we can do that. Beep. In this directory, send me index.html back. Let's see if we can do it in one line of code, guys. Let's see how good we are. Right now, if I do slash not to do's slash, oh, I have my app. I have my app. I have index.html. Now we're gonna write another kind of JavaScript code, but this code is actually in the client. This is a front end application now. We are back in the client. We are now in the client, guys. So what do we do? The first thing I'm gonna do here is essentially add a script code. And the script tag will allow us to make a call to, guess what, guys? Pull all the to-dos. Just let's pull all the to-dos, guys. Function read to-dos. This is a this is a client function read to do's guys. This is not a server side function. And this this is a little different. So what we're gonna do here is const rows, or let's call it to do's equal await fetch. We're gonna fetch http localhost 8080. Probably you can you have to use the, the machine name, but we're on the same machine, so we don't matter. But uh, I am going to do a method and get. And that's it. We have that. In case of an error, what we're gonna do? This is when things went cool. This is when things go south. When things go south, you go here, and then I don't know. Let's just print it. Console dot log error reading the to dos. Okay. So uh, what do we want to do with the to-dos? We have a JSON, a beautiful JSON with all the to-dos. I want to print, we we'll print them actually. Let's just print them for a start, okay? Log to-dos dot for each t, console dot log t, right? And let's just start with that. Let's just do that. Right, refresh. They're gonna be printed in the console. That's just what it didn't work. I know why. Because guys, in the index.html, we've created a function, but we never called it. That is why. You probably scream at me in the other end. Says, "Hey, you forgot, idiot! Idiot! You forgot to call the function, man." Error reading to dos. Let's debug and see what we did wrong, guys. We said that error reading to do's. Why did you fail to read the to do's? Oh, I know why. This is wrong endpoint, guys. We should not do that. The endpoint is slash to do's. Remember, guys? Slash to do's. Now, this. Refresh. Let's run it. Back, fresh, run. Ooh, we have these beautiful results. We have the to-dos, headers. Oh, we forgot something very important, guys. So this doesn't really give me the to-dos. This gives me just a body stream. So what we need to do is actually go const to-dos and you do result, await, result.json. Sorry about that. We actually did that, if you remember, guys, just a second ago in the API, but you just forgot. So we got the result, and then what you do is essentially, okay, parse the result, give me a JSON, right? And now this essentially will work. Let's get a run, get back, run, refresh, console, refresh, to do's, print. We got it. Dot text. Sweet, guys. This is sweet. All right, now this is boring, guys. I don't want to print in this. I want to, I want to show it in my beautiful application here. So what we can do, we can make in the body right here, for example, I don't know, some uh, list, unordered list or ordered list, okay? And then give it an ID. 
order list to do. And then what we're going to do is first when we read const order list to do document dot get element by ID. Collapse this so you can see. Uh, ordered list. What we're going to do is just read everything and just show them all. So what we do is uh, we have the element. Now let's use this element instead of just looping through them, print them. What we're going to do is we're going to create document to create element. And then we're going to create a list element, a beautiful list element, const list element. The content of the list element is equal t.text, right? And uh, I'm going to add also the ID because we're going to need it to delete, guys. I'm going to show you that later. Sweet. So we have the list element to the ID, and then finally we do uh, to dos. What's the order list to do? Dot append child. Append the list element that we just showed, and that should do the trick, guys. I think so. Let's run my application. Fresh, and we have a to do list, guys. We have a beautiful. To-do list, isn't that coolish, guys? Isn't that cool? Let's implement the delete first because it's easier, in my opinion. So with each list element, I am going to add something else. I am going to add with the list element next to it, we're gonna add, oh, how about on click, when we click on that element, I want to delete it. Huh? Does that make sense, guys? Let's do that. List element that add event listener. When someone clicks on this thing, I want you to delete it. How do we delete, guys? Remember that fetch command? We have done it before. It's an async function, so we're going to do it async. And it's a fetch command HTTP localhost 8080 to do's and then method is actually delete oh sorry get an object method is delete and uh, what else we're sending JSON right we're gonna send send a JSON object here so let's build that JSON object const uh, JSON request equal literally just the ID right and the ID is equal what guys e dot target which is the list element dot ID right which is right there or you can just literally type t dot ID whatever works for you and that will become the JSON that we sent already we have to tell the headers that hey by the way we're sending you by the way, guys, you can you can always do that. Start a new line. Uh, content type equal application application slash JSON. And finally, this is finally we will do the actual body. Right? The body is JSON dot stringify JSON request. How about that, guys? Await, right? And then we do fetch const result. All the jazz guys. Const success equal res await result dot JSON. And then we can just say, I don't know, alert deleted. We can do that. How about we try? Fresh. And if I click, ooh, deleted. Now you're telling me if I refresh, ooh, it's gone. Deleted. Refresh. Deleted. Refresh. That is pretty cool, guys. 
how about that we deleted all of them now we can't add guys so guess what we can implement add right <laughs> we really need to implement add all right so i need to remember the function that actually prompts prompt is, it, is that how you prompt yep that's it okay so prompt test equal say const n equal this and then you write that and equal test beautiful okay so we're gonna use prompt for for uh, creating stuff it's just easier and I'm lazy obviously as you can as you can see <laughs> so we're gonna create a button right here button ID equal button create to do right and then we call it add to do right and really it should should be very simple to get document dot uh, get element by ID button create and that will be const button create and then what we can do is button create dot add event listener if someone click on me go ahead and do this async obviously right almost the same exact code as this guy so I'm gonna steal it buddy I'm gonna steal some code here I'm gonna const request not the ID we really need more than that we read that to do is that what we called it to do is that, is that what post request okay it's it's expecting to do okay so equal prompt enter your to do item okay take that instead of the method delete just do a post and then booyah created I think that's it guys yeah let's try it out run an application first almost done guys add to do walk my dog let's just check oh we had a nice let's see nice created refresh the page we have walk my dog brush my teeth nice loan more I don't know <laughs> what else uh, buy a new laptop take an English lesson because my English is bad <laughs> this thing works guys delete delete all right the only thing i want to do is actually i want to refresh this thing without me refreshing it every time every time i create i want to refresh every time i delete i want to refresh last thing before we go guys almost there you can go home if you're still here guys just write a comment like hey i made it in two minutes whatever <laughs> so that means you guys are here to learn guys you're here to learn okay what we want to do forgot <laughs> So read to do's is actually the function that does this for us, right? So we have something like that. So the only thing we can do is just call it, right? There's a bug, but I'm I'm, I'm gonna keep it in purpose here, and just call read to do's. How about that? Doesn't sound hard. So every time we do and read, pull that everything and then repopulate it again. So if you already figured out the bug, I'm gonna show the bug here. There is a bug, and when you delete after delete before right after the message just say read to do's again let's check it out guys convenience testing test the new app what the heck is happening guys let's delete whoa is, is it keep adding do you know why right guys you, you you know why the reason is because we never clean up this list we're just appending to it let's show you this function which is called read to do's remember text the to do's and just start appending childs so all we need to do is just bleh, remove all the children so here's how you remove all the children you do while 
there's a way to do dot inner html html equal this but it's very slow for some reason i personally don't know i'm not an expert this is very slow right and but if you use javascript it's much faster than that you can literally see it deleting it's so slow don't use that inner html so here's what you gonna do you do a loop while there is a the first child it has a first child just go ahead and remove child I think it's called remove child remove child first child so that is just one line of code that does a loop if it has a child it will gonna remove it so it's gonna do and then it takes the first child which is the next child now and then start deleting all of that does that make sense I hope I nailed the the delete and all that stuff let's see Oh, there's nothing. Why is there nothing? Really? Whoa, something. Oh, something's bad, guys. We broke something, guys. We broke something. What did we break? I bet I break something. What did we do? <laughs> I bet you guys this this thing is wrong. Old to do, not old to do. It's not old to do. It's all to do. <laughs> That's why. Some people don't like this about JavaScript. You can use use strict, I think, to fail if the if you don't have declared variables. Or so in this case, we we have we used old instead of all l, and that was our bug. So it works. It works. A B C delete. Refresh. Delete that empty stuff. Delete. And let's add. Go to Costco. And actually, I am so hungry. Now I'm gonna say, eat lunch. I don't know. What do we have for lunch today? I have no idea. I had like a late breakfast today. Uh, Edmond Dante. All right, guys. We have a to-do list. We learned about Express. We learned about Web APIs. We learned a lot. It's a long ride. Congratulations, you made it to the end of this video. You are. You are an amazing software engineer, right? Only advice, keep writing software, guys. Have something in mind and build it. Try not to look at code, right? Try just to write and make mistakes as much as possible. And you're going to learn, right? And, uh, and I'm going to see you in the next one. If you enjoy this video, please give it a like. It really helps this channel grow. And I'm going to see you in the next one, guys. You guys stay awesome. Check out the other contents that we have. There's a lot of cool -ish stuff in this channel. We don't, we don't not only do tutorials. We do a lot of other stuff. So check it out. Goodbye, guys.